uh, bon dia from Portugal. We've now been living in Portugal for about eight months and we thought we'd do a pros and cons of living in Portugal video for anybody out there who's interested in finding out some facts. Eden's here, Story's having a nap in her crib right now but we've got our teas. Okay. Where's your tea? <laughs> we are going to kick off this video with a pro of living in Portugal and that is the ease of which we have access to the rest of Europe. This was something we were very excited about before moving here. Even though we're from England, we haven't actually toured much of Europe. So now having this access to Spain and yeah. France and all other places nearby by a car, we think we're going to get to see a lot around here. And we are on mainland Europe now rather than being in the UK where you've got the channel separating you and you have to get a ferry, we are actually right in Europe so we can just get in the car and we can drive into Spain within an hour and a half of where we actually are living right now so that's pretty cool. A few months ago we were in Porto and we went to the train station and you can actually take a train straight to Madrid. And even, Paris. Even if you don't have a car you can get around quite easily here. Yeah and of course you've got the low cost airlines throughout Europe so there's good airport links as well. Another pro while we're on the subject of transport is the infrastructure of the country is really good. The toll roads are super fast and well maintained. Mm. We haven't really experienced any traffic or traffic jams or potholes or anything like that. So driving here is a breeze and really mm. fast. So that's something that we're really impressed by with yeah. Portugal. We've been told by friends that live here that the train links are very good across the country and they're reasonably priced as well. Yeah. Next up, it is another pro. That is the third pro in a row. <laughs> the next pro is... I feel like there are less eyes on you. What I mean by that is it feels like there's less rules with regards to parking. There are a lot less speed cameras. We live in central Portugal and it feels quite nice and relaxing to drive around, park your car. In England, we were constantly having to use apps to park everywhere yeah. and pay for everywhere we stopped. Sometimes you would stop somewhere and you would get a fine in the post because you've stopped on a line you couldn't see. You don't really get that here and that's a great thing. Just in general, it, as a country, it just feels freer to just go about everyday life. Story's awake now. <laughs> yeah. Do you wanna say hello? Hi. <laughs> Our first con on the list, yeah. something that we've noticed, is the car prices here are ridiculously yeah. high. It is so expensive to buy a vehicle. As a quick example, we drive a Mazda 3 Sport hatchback car 2010. It cost us about £4,000 in England. To buy the same car out here would cost you about €14,000 mm. and that's of the same year. Yeah. So it is very expensive to buy a car yeah. in Portugal. Back with the pros, another one is that you can drink the tap water. And I know you can drink the tap water in the UK as well and most of Europe but we're comparing it to when we used to live in Asia you obviously can't drink the tap water there, so that's a difference for us. Also, if you don't fancy drinking the tap water, there are springs available in certain villages where you can just get spring water straight out of the village tap, yeah. which I think is really cool, really different. Yeah. I haven't seen that in many places. And all the locals do it, so we do it too. <laughs> yeah. Another pro is that Portugal is really good with recycling. And again, another comparison to when we lived in Thailand and Asia, we didn't recycle there at all, did we? No, we tried to yeah. and found out that not many people were doing it or offering a service for that. Yeah, but here in Portugal there are recycling plants everywhere. And we found that Portugal is very forward thinking when it comes to green movement, mm. like with new wind energy policies and... <laughs> Burden! <that a> <laughs> it's it's just because I said wind! <laughs> new wind policy, <laughs> but... Excuse you! <laughs> so we're quite impressed with Portugal and the way they recycle here. The next pro, and this is a big pro, especially for us, is the house rental prices. They are very, very low in comparison to England. This house that we're in right now is a two bedroom house in central Portugal and we pay 375 euros a month. Yeah. We have a big garden, big kitchen, big living room. Yeah, driveway. Driveway, all fully furnished. It's a really nice place, it's very pretty and it's so cheap in comparison. If we were to try and find a similar property in England, the same distance away from the capital city, yeah. we would be paying close to 700 to 800 pounds a month. Yeah, and pounds. unfurnished as well. Yeah. It's very difficult in the UK to find a rental house that's actually fully furnished. And also pets, that's a big issue. A lot of rentals don't allow pets either. Another point you may find interesting is that this property we're in right now is actually cheaper than the rental we were paying in Thailand. Yeah. So most people would think Southeast Asia is cheaper than Portugal yeah. but actually depending on the style and type of property you're living in and standards 
It's not. Yeah. Back on to the cons list though, while we're still talking about houses, we found that house insulation is actually quite bad here in <laughs> Portugal. So when it gets to the winter yeah. time, which does get quite cold, mm. you get cold. New houses and old houses alike, yeah. they're not very well insulated. No, they're not set up for winter. They're set up for summer because mm. you get more heat here in Portugal. So they're designed to keep the house cool. But when it's winter time and it's cold outside, the house is very cold. So we've got our log burner fire and radiators, but really... They don't work very well <laughs> and most people just wrap up and put layers yeah. on throughout the winter. Yeah. Leading us back to the pros, the weather. Only three months of winter and nine months of spring summery temperatures yeah. is pretty good to me, mm -hmm. especially as somebody from the UK where we don't get much of a summer. And a comparison to Asia and when we lived in Thailand, the weather, obviously it's hot there, all the time but it's a different kind of heat so in Thailand you want to go and sit outside to have your lunch you can't really because it's too sweaty it's hot and it's just uncomfortable heat whereas in Portugal we sit outside in the garden all the time even in like end of February I think I was sitting yeah. out in the garden because it's nice and summertime it's a nice summer heat it's enjoyable not, heat yeah, that you can actually utilize <laughs> it's not you walk out your door and you're already covered in sweat. <laughs> Still on the pros list, Portuguese people are very friendly. They have been to us. Yeah. We've had some very good experiences with Portuguese people while we've been living here. If you need help with something yeah. and you actually ask for it, people will go out of their way above and beyond to help you out. But also on that note, we have also put a con is Portuguese people initially can seem quite intimidating. Yeah. <laughs> Especially outside of the city or, yeah. or the older generation, they might not seem friendly and they will stare at you Yeah. and you might feel like they're unfriendly but as soon as you say your hola bom dias and boa tards and good mornings, they generally liven up and you know spark into yeah. life. Especially because we're talking from experience in our village which is a predominant older generation that live here. And we will be walking around with Eden and people will stop and they will stare as we walk past. But as we're walking past, we say, Bon dia, and they will smile and they'll say hello and then start walking mm, on their way again. Or and they'll they... ask about the baby yeah. and generally liven up. So yeah. even though sometimes initially uh, Portuguese people can seem a bit intimidating or unfriendly, we've found that they're, <laughs> that they're not. Another pro, we feel that Portugal is a very diverse country in a small area. So from the north to mm. the south is very different. The architecture up north is completely different to the architecture down south. And the rainfall is different, so you get different trees. Within a few hours driving from one place to the next, you feel like you're in a completely different environment sometimes. So just a quick trip from our house within an hour. We have got beaches, we've got mountains, we've got mm. lovely forests. It's quite yeah. impressive really how much it changes in such a short distance. A massive pro for us, we are coffee lovers and you can get very good, very cheap coffee here in Portugal. Yes. The standard is sky high and the price is so cheap. Yeah. I'm talking 50 cents, 40 cents yeah. for a good cup of coffee. Also as a con though, if you're into your fancy coffees and your foam art and latte art, they are much harder to come by in Portugal because mm. the Portuguese are big cafe shot espresso drinkers. So if you like black coffee, good quality, strong coffee, you will find that no problem. But if you're looking for a skinny soy latte with <laughs> mm. hazelnut shot, you're not gonna find it. Even just a cappuccino, you'll very yeah. rarely find a cappuccino. You'd have to go to a very touristy area to get one. Yeah, a good one anyway. Yeah, all the coffee types are different here. They have different names for them. So you have to learn yeah. what the Portuguese variants of coffees are, but milky coffees and general coffee is very good here but you don't get that fancy cafe culture no. that you do elsewhere no in Europe. And, and Yeah, no latte yeah. art and stuff like that. So if you're expecting that, you're not gonna get it. <laughs> oh, you were sorry, expecting sorry. it. Sorry, yeah, sorry. you're not getting it. <laughs> Another con. On the subject of eating out or drinking out, if you are a vegetarian or a vegan, you will struggle in Portugal. Yeah. It's a very meat dominant country. Yeah. <laughs> Local restaurants won't really cater for vegan diets no. or anything like that. It's very meat and fish based, so we're vegetarians and it 
boils down to sometimes a cheese sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Or we just end up getting pastries or a dessert yeah. because you can't get many other options yeah. besides from that. So that's why it's a con. Eating out as a vegan or a vegetarian here is difficult. Another con, we have a lot of vegan cookbooks and if we want to go and buy some specialist ingredients, we will struggle with it. In the UK, we could go to our local Tesco and we could buy buckwheat flour, let's say, <laughs> from just off the shelf. Yeah. Here, you'd never find that <laughs> unless you were in a specialist health store yeah. like Solero, which is only in the big mall in the city. So it's not easy to get specialist ingredients or specialist stuff. Back to the pros again though. If you have a pet, the vet treatment prices out here are much lower mm. than in England. I'm talking yeah. maybe a third of the price of what you would pay in the UK and the standard is obviously very high, yeah. European standards. Yeah, for example, we took Eden for her yearly checkup with the vet and her yearly vaccinations and a flea and tick treatment and it cost us 36 euros. And my mum also has a dog similar size to Eden and she paid £55 for her same exact treatment. same thing. Mm. So it was over £20 cheaper what we paid here than what we would have paid had we been in the UK. <laughs> I just went to get Story some food. <laughs> and we are going to go ahead with another pro. And that is the internet. It is very fast here. Yeah. Got very good internet speeds in this country. All fibre optic and not expensive. Pretty much every phone network that you sign up to gives you good 3G and 4G coverage. So internet here is great and inexpensive. Another pro is residency and living in this country long term. As Europeans and we've got some friends who are American, we've all found it quite easy to get long term residency options here in Portugal. It feels like the government actually wants you here Whereas when we lived in Asia, it was very difficult to stay for any period of time over 90 days. When it comes to the initial bureaucracy, when you first go into the procedure, it can seem a little bit tricky and complicated. But really, if you look back on it in hindsight, it wasn't mm. so bad. No. And now we have a temporary residency permit that allows us to stay in this country for five years. At the end of that, we can then apply for a more permanent stay. It's much more relaxing much easier to do. Yeah. One of the major reasons why we left Thailand was because finding long-term staying options were very hard for people who weren't retired. Yeah. And you never quite know when you were gonna get kicked out of the country. <laughs> and we didn't want to bring a baby up mm. under those conditions. Yeah. It didn't feel nice. And there's lots of money under the table and it's never you're never just quite sure really. So mm. we wanted to be more secure, secure. <laughs> <laughs> with the baby. <laughs> Back onto a con. This is a major problem for me, online shopping. <laughs> I don't like shopping, but I like online shopping. Mm. And you don't get good options for it here. No, they don't really do. Yeah, they don't really do eBay, they don't really do Amazon here. Yeah. You have to buy things from outside of the country and get it brought in. Then you have to pay heavy import taxes on certain items. They get stuck at customs for sometimes up to three months. Yeah. If you want to buy anything specialist, like a camera or electrical equipment, or just generally anything that you can't get here in the country and it has to come from elsewhere, it's not easy and it's very expensive to do so. I have been told by some of my Portuguese friends though that they order items from Spain and they found certain companies that deliver for free with no customs. There's probably a lot more to learn about that, but so far our experience of ordering things online has been tricky and expensive. Mm. The next pro is the good medical care in Portugal. I had our baby story in the maternity hospital in Coimbra and I don't have any negative comments to say about it. It was very good, I was looked after well and the nurses were friendly. Not all of them spoke much English but the ones that did were very helpful and even the ones that didn't did a very good job. Yeah. <laughs> we take Story to our local health centre for her checkups and her vaccinations and they are really really lovely in there and welcoming and they look after story really well yeah. and she gets all the checkups and health care that she would get if we were in England. What's nice is they treat you like family here. Yeah. You have a family nurse yeah. and she does really look after story as yeah. if she was somebody who was related to you. Yeah, she and gives us a hug, doesn't she? Yeah. She's always asking how we are. She asks how my dad is because she met him. Yeah, very friendly <laughs> yeah. and they can speak English 
and it's it's nice it then and it's covered on on an nhs yeah. like for us when you within the first 90 days of living in the country and after those 90 days on a residency permit you get the same privileges as a portuguese resident so medical care is good the last con we have to mention i guess is an important one which would be language barriers we have found that many people speak english in this country but mostly concentrated around the cities and with younger people mm. outside of the cities where we live here in Motagua, which is in central Portugal. Nobody in our village speaks English yeah. and even in the shops, even in the supermarkets, apart from medical staff mm. and the vet, nobody speaks any English. So you do have to learn Portuguese if you want to have a good life out here. In terms of things like going to a restaurant, the menus will all be in Portuguese. You can obviously read it, what it says, but it's Portuguese. So it's the same mm. alphabet, but different words. Yeah. <laughs> so menus and signages and shops and things, there's very rare to see an English sign. But if you have any kind of knowledge of French or Italian or mm. any European language from this side of the world, you can generally get by because yeah. a lot of the words are quite similar. And we are both learning Portuguese. It doesn't take that long to pick up the basics and to be able to get by without too many troubles. Yes, you do have to learn Portuguese to have a good life, but you don't have to learn Portuguese to start here. Yeah, you can get by. Wrapping up this video with a final pro is that we are closer to our friends and family living in Portugal and Europe than we were living in Asia. And the flights back home <laughs> are obviously much cheaper and much quicker. The last time I was back in the UK with my mum, she was saying, oh, you live so far away in Portugal. But then I said to her, if we were to live in the UK, we would most likely live three or four hours away in an area we could afford and they would have to drive to somewhere like Wales yeah. to come and see us. Whereas now where we live in Portugal, it's a different environment. It's hot and sunny. It's a holiday and it's only two hours by plane. So in some ways, weighing up a few factors it is actually better and feels closer living here in Portugal than it did in Asia and even in England. So that is our list of pros and cons. As you can tell, there is many more pros. 15 pros to 8 cons. So not bad going, is it? Not bad going at all. <laughs> we are very much enjoying our time here. We've only been here for 8 months. We have much more to experience and much more to learn. Yep. And we think that moving here was the best thing for us at this particular stage in our life. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Hope it's helped you make a decision about whether you want to move to Portugal or not. And we'll see you next time. Bye. bye. Say bye, Story. Mm. Ciao. There's a smile. <laughs> that will do. Good girl.